welcome you to worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A few announcements. Um, first and foremost, our prayers are with Kathy Summers. Um, she found out she has colon cancer and has started treatments. And so um, prayers for her as she continues that process in this upcoming week. Um, a few announcements. Two o'clock on tomorrow, Martin Lucian will be leading the Bible study at the Meadows. Um, a reminder, because it's not the normal time or day, um, or it's not the normal day, normal time, but two o'clock tomorrow is the Meadows Bible study. Um, also, tomorrow at 3.30, we will have the every meal delivery. So just a reminder that it's not on Thursday like normal due to events going on in the school. But 3.30 is the every meal delivery. If you'd like to help with that this year, we would love to have some extra help. Um, 7 o'clock on Tuesday, we will have our Bible study again. We're on the Gospel of John. We just started it, so it's a great time to jump in if you've been considering checking that out. On Wednesday, we will have KFC after school. We'll arrive here about 3.45, and then 5.15 will be dinner, and 6 o'clock is worship. For dinner, um, 5.15, thanks to Lonnie Myram for um, applying for a Thrivent card and helping us with the dinner. We are still looking for some upcoming sponsors for meals. Um, Ed Phillips is looking at cooking once a month, and so we could use some help on the other weeks of the month. So uh, please consider doing that as you're able. 6.30 is confirmation. We'll be doing our quilting project with our seniors. So quilting at 6.30 and 7.30 is youth group afterwards. Thursday, a reminder that we have beverages and Bibles at the Elks at 6 o'clock. We'll be doing the Call of Samuel. It's been a really fun group this, during the past year, so I encourage you to check it out. Um, next Sunday school will next Sunday we will have um, Sunday school at 8:45. So if you know of little people who have not um, started coming yet this year, a reminder that it's 8:45 before church um, every Sunday, except for weeks when when Worthington does not have school on Friday or Monday. So Sunday school next week, we'll also have a blessing of the new furniture downstairs. Um, the furniture was largely uh, provided for by um, memorials from Winora Halstrom and the Halstrom family. And then, of course, uh, Brenda Hurlbut and Mary Ingenthron did the work in selecting the furniture, um, as well as various other church groups provided for the furniture as well. So we'll bless that space at the end of worship next week. Um, Roger and Marge Larson celebrate their 71st uh, wedding anniversary this week, and so we'll continue to keep them in our prayers as they celebrate that great blessing. Um, I, downstairs, I will put out some information. Uh, contrary to what I thought before, South Africa, our partner synod, in the Andini circuit of South Africa is actually um, sending a group to visit us and they actually just arrived this week. Um, they are traveling throughout our synod doing various presentations, including making a stop here, but there are several potlucks and events going on. And so if that is of interest to you, I will put out some information downstairs and I encourage you to take a look at it. Several things are coming up within the next week. So um, if you're interested, please take a look at that. Our youth are doing Pizza Ranch fundraisers for um, their summer trips. So I know that uh, Ethan is selling for sure. Is anybody else selling Pizza Ranch stuff? We got Miles. Anybody else? Nelson, uh, Kinsley, and Dyson. All right, so any of these kids who raise their hand, Find them afterwards if you'd like to buy a pizza. Um, they are really good. They have some breakfast pizzas that are very good. And uh, we need to get the order in soon. But they will get a portion of that funding back for each pizza sold. Very easy way for us to support our youth. So find them after church today. Um, if anyone does want to have their picture taken today, Brenda has said that she will take pictures. It wasn't in the announcements, but she is willing to take pictures. Um, that is for our updating of our directory, which is happening um, 
right now we're working on it. So please talk to Brenda if you'd like your picture taken. Last but not least, a happy birthday to Addie Hine is celebrating her birthday, I think, today? Yeah? So um, can we join together and sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Addie. Happy birthday to you. Hope you have a wonderful day. With that, please stand and we'll continue with the confession and forgiveness unless there are any other announcements. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering song, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace for the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Holy God, your servant Jacob wrestled with your angel and prevailed. In honor of his persistence, you gave him a new name. Teach us to preach in the face of struggle and call us by name. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now the first reading from Genesis chapter 32. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all that steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with their children. Yet you have said, I will surely do, good, do you good, 
and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. So he spent that, so he spent that night there, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and eleven children, and he crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him in the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no, no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The word of the Lord. Join me responsibly in reading Psalm 22, verse chapter one, verses 1 through 11. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me? So far from words of my groaning. My God, cry out my faith, but you do not Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on praises of Israel. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. All who see me laugh, me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Good morning. Hey, Nelson, you want to sit down over here? Okay. Hello. How are you guys doing today? Good. I want to show you something. I've got something in here. What's this? What's the matter with it? They're broken. It's broken. Do you think it's still useful? Yes. How would I, could I still write with it? Yeah, I, I could still write and, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, but it would still work, right? Yeah. So even if it's broken, we can still find a good use for it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I've got something here. Some bracelet. So, have you ever felt like sometimes you're just pushed in all kinds of pieces? Like, okay... Nelson, here, you hold that one. That's school. And Miles, there's your piano lessons. And this might be cleaning your room. This one might be helping mom clean the house. This one might be maybe you had uh, other piano lessons. This might be PE at school. And for me, it would be like teaching every day. Whoopsie. And then I'd have lesson plans and grandkids and cleaning my house, taking care of my dog, all kinds of pieces, just all broken around, all over the place. Sometimes at the end of the day, I don't feel like I'm even me anymore. 
I feel like I'm in little pieces everywhere, kind of broken up in all kinds of pieces. But you know what the good news is? No matter how broken we might feel, no matter how many different places we might be, and no matter how much our attention has to be somewhere else, yeah, perfect. God will still take all those pieces. Can you give me my pieces back? Take all those pieces, all these pieces that were once me, but I shared, or were once you, and you shared with other people. And see, it's still just kind of all put together, but God will mold us and form us, no matter how broken we are, no matter how upset we are. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'll just let him have that one. He can put us back together and make us whole. God can find a use for us, no matter how broken we are, no matter hurt or upset we are. In the um, gospel for today, you're going to be hearing about Jesus, and he goes to pray, and he's wrestling with God, trying to have him take away what's going to have to happen to him. We all wrestle with our things every now and then. Maybe you've got a friend who's been bothering you or needs help, and you're wrestling with, should I help her? Should I tell my mom and dad? Is she in trouble? What can I do? God will help you. We all wrestle in some way, but God will put all of our little pieces back together, and he will find some way to use us. You remember that? Okay. All right. And I couldn't really give you broken cookies or anything, so I, gave, I got some smaller cookies that would be like they're broken from a big cookie. Are these cookies still going to taste okay? Yeah. Even though they're broken into little pieces? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the beauty of these children. I ask that you will watch over them and guide them and keep them safe. I ask also, Lord, that you will help them remember that no matter how broken or upset they are, that you will always use them and find a good way for them to be a part of you. I ask all of these things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Gospel according to Mark, the 14th chapter. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Then he took with him Peter and James and John and began to become distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. One of the main reasons we decided to move to the narrative lectionary, which is um, the passages that we're using in this upcoming year, was that in the narrative lectionary, as opposed to the revised common lectionary, the passages move in a more chronological order throughout the Bible. Uh, following this, we find, helps people follow the plot line from Old Testament to New Testament a little more clearly. Nonetheless, though, obviously we can't cover all of the stories of the Bible, and so there are still huge plot gaps in this story. 
So last week, if you remember, we heard that Abraham and Sarah would have a child, Isaac, in their old age. And this week, Isaac is actually already an old man himself. And we pick up the story hearing about how Isaac's son, Jacob, is fleeing Isaac's other son, Esau. This past week in confirmation, we were doing Bible Olympics, which is my way of helping youth understand the main concepts or basic background information about the Bible before we dive into more specific elements of our faith. In one of the movies that we watched as an introduction movie, it talked about how most of the biblical characters that we see in the Bible are deeply flawed and not really people we should actually want to be like, for the most part. However, they are good people to learn about because God does great things for them and through them and guides them, despite of all of their failings. We can learn from their flaws and we can learn by watching God's faithfulness and provision for them. Despite the fact that Jacob is considered a pillar figure for the nation of Israel, he is considered the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, in fact, this is definitely true for him. He is definitely a very flawed individual. So the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica summarizes the following about Jacob's life. According to the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, Jacob was the younger twin of his brother Esau, who was the ancestor of Edom and the Edomites. The two, Jacob and Esau, are representatives of two different grades of social order, Jacob being a pastoralist and Esau a nomadic hunter. During her pregnancy, Rebecca was told by God that she would give birth to twins. Each of them would found a great nation, and Esau, the elder, would serve the younger brother. As it turned out, which was very unusual for that time, usually the oldest child, the oldest male child, was um, the heir and the ruler of the family. As it turned out, Jacob, the younger, by means of an elaborate double deception, managed to obtain his elder brother's birthright from their father. Jacob then fled his brother's wrath and went to take refuge with the Armenian tribe of his ancestors at Haran of Mesopotamia. Now, along his journey, Jacob received a special revelation from God. God promised Jacob lands and numerous offspring that would prove to be a blessing for the entire earth. Jacob named the place where he received that vision Bethel, or house of God. Arriving at his uncle Laban's, Laban's home in Haran, Jacob fell in love with his cousin Rachel. He worked for her father, Laban, for several years to obtain Rachel's hand in marriage. But then Laban substituted his older daughter, Leah, for Rachel at the wedding ceremony. A very strange and even more complicated story, but we won't go there today. Unwittedly married to Leah, Jacob was thus compelled to serve Laban for another seven years so that he could take his beloved Rachel for his wife as well. Jacob then served Laban for another six years, during which he amassed a large amount of property. Well, this angered his father-in-law and his brother-in-laws. So by God's guidance, Jacob decides he must return back to his homeland with all of his wives, his children, and his livestock. The problem is he's now going to have to face his still very angry brother. So he then sets out on his way with his wives and his children to return to Palestine. On the way, Jacob wrestled a mysterious stranger, a divine being, who changed Jacob's name to Israel. And that's where we pick up the story today. Terry Morrison sometimes teases me about how often I say this, but I'll say it again anyway. This story is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> First, Jacob's life and story turns out fine, amazingly well, in fact. He marries both Leah and Rachel, which, as I said, is another very strange story. But then he has 13 children with all of these women and their maidservants. His descendants become the 12 tribes of Israel. He has lots of wealth and livestock. 
In what I consider to be one of the most miraculous parts of the story, which we don't hear today but is coming, Esau forgives Jacob. When Esau eventually catches up to Jacob, Jacob expects that Esau is going to kill him. But instead, Esau forgives him. There is more to the story, but I don't want to get too far off focus today. But I do encourage you to read all of Jacob's story in Genesis. It covers several chapters, and it's a really good story. In short, Jacob keeps encountering problems, and he keeps getting into messes and relationship tangles, and still, God still keeps providing for Jacob no matter what. Jacob and most of the characters of the Bible should give us hope. God doesn't just bless the righteous. God uses and works with some seriously, pretty seriously flawed people in the Bible. God can use you and God can use me, despite our problems and failings. God isn't waiting for us to get it together before blessing us. Even in those moments when you've really messed up, I encourage you to look around. There will always be blessings from God. There always are. Secondly, I love the image of Jacob wrestling with a mysterious man who appears to be an angel, a divine messenger, and a representative from God. Many times, people think faith is something that is passive. We just sit back and pray and hope for the best, waiting for God's answers and God's guidance. But I think faith is more like a holy wrestle, like we see today. We are encouraged to come to God fervently, passionately, with whatever is on our hearts and minds. Sometimes when someone is sharing bad news with me, I say, well, I'm going to just go yell at God about that. I often get puzzled looks from people when I say things like that. But it's this image of wrestling that I mean. I don't think that I have a right to yell at God about the hardships of the world and the people around me but I think that God still invites me to do so. This image of wrestling, along with so many other stories and passages in the Bible, are reminders that God isn't just asking us to be passive in our faith. Faith is a holy wrestle. It's a struggle. God invites us to be earnest in our pleas. Today we hear Jacob even demanding a blessing, and God does in fact heed to that demand and give him a blessing. It should be noted, I think, that when we hear about this wrestle today, we hear that Jacob's hit, hip was put out of place in the wrestle. When we earnestly struggle in faith, we might likewise encounter hardships. We might find more questions that are on our hearts and minds. Other people might question our level or quality of faith if we ask hard questions. We might find ourselves in difficult situations when we heed to what God is telling us when we wrestle in faith. The injuries and the blessings, as we see in today's story, come together. But most importantly, we trust that despite the hardships, we will be blessed. Jacob's name is changed to Israel in this story. Now, a name change in the Bible always signifies that someone has had a profound life shift, and basically they have a new identity. So Abram to Abraham, Saul to Paul, etc. When we see this name change, we realize that Jacob will never be the same after his holy wrestle. He will always be wounded, but more importantly, he will always be blessed. Are you worried about a loved one suffering from an addiction? Are you overwhelmed by a frightening diagnosis? Does it feel like your heart has been ripped out because of a conflict with a family member or friend? God is inviting you to wrestle for the answers and what you need. You might find hardships and suffering in your wrestle, but you will also be forever changed and blessed by God. God promises us that. God promises us blessings. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Give Me Jesus.
join me for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God, who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessings of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Merciful God, God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and dis disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or in pain of any kind. We especially remember Kathy, Rosie, Glenda, Doris, Val, Pearl, Sandra, Zach, Gail, Joanne, Linda, Todd, Charlene, Marilyn, Julian Denny, Mary, Roger, Diane, Betty, Sandra, Joan, Jean, Megan, Abigail, Nicole, Hilda, Stan, Tammy, Mark, Joe, Butch, Josh, Tom, Brad. We especially also remember Emmett this weekend. We ask that you would surround him with peace and comfort. And if it is your will, healing. We ask that you would surround his family and his friend and his loved ones with all strength. We also pray for our service, men and women, and Love, Inc. Merciful God, our gracious God, we ask that you would be with Roger and Marge as they celebrate their anniversary, surround them with all joys and good things. Merciful God, our gracious God, we pray for our farmers as they begin this harvest season. I ask that you would provide for them and prosper the work of their hands that you would keep them safe and watch over them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the upcoming Meals on Wheels deliveries. We thank you for blessing those drivers and those individuals receiving meals last week. We ask that you would continue to provide for all who are in need. We ask that you would bless the lives of those who are receiving meals and that you would watch over all drivers. Merciful God, our prayer. gracious God, we ask that you would be with us as we struggle in faith. Help us to have confidence to engage in a holy wrestle with you. Help us to trust that you will bless us and provide for us. Merciful God, our God who abounds in steadfast love, we give thanks for all of the saints called to the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. United with them in spirit, Hold us firm as we labor in this life and look to the life to come. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and all prayers of the heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. As a sign of that peace, let us share the peace with those around us.
be seated and continue, continue worshiping God with our tithes and offerings. As a part of our Cultivating Generous Congregation program, we continue to lift up a moment in the life of our congregation to remind ourselves what our money makes happen here. And I just want to celebrate with you all the start of our youth programs. Uh, last week we had, I believe, about 30 kids in KFC um, from preschool to middle school. Um, we had several new adult uh, volunteers, so thank you to those of you who have stepped up to do that. Um, we shared a meal with not only them, but uh, their families and got to know them a little bit more. We also had a great first night of confirmation um, with uh, nine youth between First and Grace, and this morning had a great uh, group of Sunday school kids. Um, so we have been blessed with what we've hoped for. Um, I always hear that we want kids, and we've been getting kids. And so I encourage you all to come on Wednesday or Sunday or confirmation and get to know these families because um, we have gotten what we've been asking for. So um, we continue worshiping God with our tithes and offerings. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, we offer our diverse gifts and our lives that inspired by your spirit of grace, we may bring your realm close to those who hunger for justice and freedom. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymns. in which he betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. All are welcome to commune with us. The wine is purple. The juice is white. Parents, help me know if your child receives communion or a blessing, and all are welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. O God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your people and its many, earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue to bless communion. Um, please let us know if someone is not receiving communion who should be. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and in prison. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament. And give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We continue with our final song, I'm So Glad That Jesus Lifted Me. Please stand. Please stand.